In this lesson, we will learn the distance and midpoint formulas. So the distance formula uh, basically helps us to find the distance between two points. So it would be the direct distance like as the crow flies. Um, it can be found using the Pythagorean theorem, and I didn't want to waste a lot of time on that, but I did link a great YouTube video from Patrick JMT who goes through the steps for how we get from the Pythagorean theorem to the distance formula. So the distance formula is right here. In essence, we're finding the difference of the x values and squaring it, and the difference of the y values and squaring it, and then adding those values together to take the square root. So we're going to find the distance between 4, 6, and 9, 0 using the distance formula. So the distance formula says to subtract the x's and y's. And remember, it's OK if you want to label them. So x1, y1 means my first x, my first y. x2, y2 means my second x, my second y. I'm going to subtract 4 minus 9 and square it and I'm going to subtract 6 minus 0 and square it. So 4 minus 9 is, of course, negative 5. And 6 minus 0 is 30, sorry, is 6. I got ahead of myself and started squaring it. Negative 5 squared, remember, no matter what, if you are squaring something, it's going to turn positive. So whether that was negative 5 squared or positive 5 squared, I should get 25. 6 squared is 36, and then, of course, I'm going to combine those values together. So 25 plus 36 is 61. Now, the exact distance would be radical 61, and we'll just call it units. If I were able to reduce that radical by taking out a perfect square factor like we worked on last week, I would do that. In this case, I cannot. The other thing they want me to do is approximate that to the nearest hundredth. So in my calculator, I'm going to take the square root of 61. I'm going to say that the distance approximately equals 7.81 units. And of course, if I wanted to graph that on a coordinate plane, I could see that that's about how many units that it covered. This one asks for us to determine if the points form the vertices of a right triangle. So there's going to be quite a bit of work involved in this question. So A is at negative 1, 2. B is at 3, 6. And C is at 6, 3. So my triangle looks like this. And the question is, is this a right triangle? So that means, is that a right angle? So obviously A is not a right angle, C is not a right angle, just based on you know visually looking at the triangle. So in order for me to do that, I would have to check it with the Pythagorean theorem. But first then, I would have to find each of the distances. So I'm gonna find the distance from A to B, which would be negative one minus three quantity squared. So I'm just using the distance formula between A and B, and then two minus six quantity squared which gives me 16 plus 16, which would be radical 32, which I, of course, would then turn into 4 radical 2. So AB is 4 radical 2. Now I'm going to find BC in the same way. So BC would be 3 minus 6 squared plus 6 minus 3 squared. That gives me 9 and 9, which gives me radical 18 or uh, 3 radical 2. And then the last one, of course, would be the long, this would be the hypotenuse if it's a right triangle. So that would be AC. And again, just using the distance formula again, negative 1 minus 6 squared plus 2 minus 3 squared, which gives me 49 plus 1, which would be radical 50, which would be 5 radical 2. So now my question is, if I take 4 radical 2 squared, so that's the leg squared, plus 3 radical 2 squared, do I get, 
question mark, 5 radical 2 squared. So let's take a look. 4 radical 2 squared would be 4 times 4, or 16, times 2, so that's 32. 3 radical 2 squared would be 3 squared of 9 times radical 2 squared of 2, so that's 18. And my last one, 5 squared would be 25 times radical 2 squared of 2, so that's 50. Does 32 plus 18 equal 50? Yes, that works out. And so therefore, yes, these are the vertices of a right triangle because it uses the Pythagorean theorem. Here's a, an easier question than the last one for you to try on your own. So press pause, find the distance between those two points, and then press play to check your work. For the first points, or the first two values I'll use, I'm going to use my x values. So negative 5 minus negative 2 squared. Remember when you minus a negative, your ching ching or keep flip change to add the opposite. And then of course 9 minus 6 squared. That gives me negative 5 plus 2 or negative 3 squared, which is 9. 9 minus 6 is 3, 3 squared is 9. That gives me radical 18, which in exact distance would be 3 radical 2. The approximation means use your calculator, take the square root of 2, multiply that times 3. An approximation of the distance would be 4.24, and again, there's really no label other than units on either of those. This is the midpoint formula, so it's sort of related to the distance formula. We always learn them at the same time. The midpoint finds the point, the coordinates of the point, that are halfway between the two endpoints of the segment. So that's why we call it, of course, the midpoint. And when you're using the midpoint formula, it's important to understand what you're doing. You're really just averaging the x values, adding them together, dividing by 2. Averaging the y values, adding them together, divide by 2. So let's take a look. If I have the midpoint of a line segment with endpoints 2, 7, and 5, 15, they're saying if I wanted to put a point halfway between those two, what would it look like? So to find the midpoint, I would take 2 plus 5 divided in half, and 7 plus 15 divided in half. I, of course, would reduce, so 2 plus 5 is 7. That's 7 halves. 7 plus 15 is 22 divided by 2. 7 halves, I would really just leave as 7 halves unless they wanted me to turn it into 3 and 1 half. Uh, 22 divided by 2 is, of course, 11. So if I graph those two points, and I'll let you do that on your own, you can do that on Desmos. You can find those two points um, and then plot this point, and they should make a nice, they should all be the same distance from 7 halves comma 11. So both of those points are the same distance from that midpoint. So here's one for you to try on your own. So press pause, find the midpoint of the se segment, and then press play to check your work. Again, midpoint, fairly easy. I'm just adding the two values. So the biggest thing that you need to remember is when do you add and when do you subtract? When you're finding the midpoint, you add every time. Negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2 divided by 2. 9 plus negative 3 is 6 divided by 2. This reduces to negative 1. 6 over 2 reduces to 3. And therefore, the midpoint of the segment containing those two points is negative 1, comma 3.